Okay, good evening everyone. Good evening. everyone. Welcome. And welcome to the final webinar of our five webinar series celebrating the work and the life of our teacher Pauline Sasaki. And um, we've got a nice packed program for you. If you just want to say hi in the chat, just say hi where you're from. And um, I'll just share the slides with you and I'll show you what we've got in store for you today. Diana, by the way, is in the chat. She's right there in the chat. So uh, you'll be um, seeing her posting all the way through the webinar. OK, we're going to review all the last four weeks just to make sure that we're kind of all on the same page. And then Nicholas put together some slides just to reinforce the central channels. We'll look at the question we left you with last week, which was how would you integrate this work? And we've got a couple of polls for that. Um, and then we're going to do demos. We're going to all set up. We've got models waiting and we're going to give you three demos so you can see how similar and how differently we all three of us actually use this material in our in our uh, shiatsu work. So we're really looking forward to that. You can see my futons behind me and you can see the um, uh, tables there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we're going to just give you a quick guide at the end to the um, online course and forum, which is all going to be set up and the final week gets released on this Thursday. Um, and then we look forward to the next webinar, which next Tuesday, which is our final webinar of the year. We'll tell you a little bit about that. We're going to be sharing what we're going to be doing next year. So, yep, that's uh, that's what we've got in store. So I think I better go straight ahead and go into the review. OK, so here's a review of uh, one, two, three and four. So <clears throat> what we did right at the beginning was we linked Pauline's work with the Namakoshi system. We explored how he developed Kyonjitsu, Hara diagnosis um, and the extended meridians. Um, we talked about how Pauline was influenced by Masanaga. She was very close to Masanaga's work, um, but she found that at a certain point of working that she needed more input in terms of energy work. And that's when she went and studied with Kishi. And that influenced her in many ways. Um, and some of those influences are still um, being felt now in Shiatsu. So Kishi was uh, in Paris at the time, Pauline apprenticed with him. Kishi was using a range of different touches, touch depths, and he was using quite a lot of etheric work at the time when she studied with him. And he was trying to refine the whole shiatsu process down. Um, one of the things that happened with Pauline's work as she moved away from Masanaga was she had this lighter touch, which was more like a scan, really. And certainly when I was studying with her in the mid 80s, she would actually scan the hara etherically as well. So there was more of an emphasis on getting an idea of how the energy was moving in the etheric field and how that reflected into the whole energy field, rather than going down more deeply into the individual areas. So the Hara was much faster and lighter. And that's one, probably one of the things that you would notice most if you saw her working um, in comparison to the Masnaga technique. So there was a, a lighter touch, a fast, steady rhythm. And the idea was you reflected back and assessed all the air, the energy of all the areas. OK, we went on to week two. We then, <clears throat> having explored um, the touch, uh, we looked more, we took this from the Tao Te Ching, we brought it in and we talked about how we explored how Pauline moved from working Kyo and Jitsu, which Masnaka introduced into Shiatsu, into more working towards unification. And the way she did that in the technique was to focus on one meridian and kind of balance out one meridian and allow that to spread, that work to spread out and influence the energy field as a whole. And we've quoted the Tao Te Ching for that. Um, we then went into the whole alignment method. And that's when we introduced this idea of contraction and expansion, which is basically um, how we can uh, influence the touch, our touch, by how we set ourselves up. And that's very much in the Masanaga lineage, because one of the features of Masanaga's work was, as he developed it from Namakoshi, was the whole idea of centering in the hara, relaxing the body, feeling the connection between two hands. So in other words, the way we set ourselves up, the way we set our energy up, influences not only what we experience from the receiver, but also what kind of touch and what kind of experience the receiver has. And so that was a direct... Uh, development from the Masnaga approach. Self-development, self-awareness, expanding our awareness and bringing it into the touch. 
And we had this picture here of Pauline. You can see how she's opening up in the upper areas here, the upper chakras. She's using her vision. She's relaxing and opening, but she's anchoring it by releasing down to the sacrum. There's a balance of the contractive and expansive phases that allows us to control the touch. Okay, so then we broke it down to contractive phase, which is basically when things manifest, they become more structured. Um, the touch, if we are more contractive in our touch, it means that we feel separate parts. We feel the elbow, we feel the wrist, we feel this part of the arm, we feel a subo, an individual subo. And it brings us down into a more differentiated perception. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. But what we can also do is we can go into the expansive phase and we explored using the peripheral vision, the alignment. Um, and what happens then is we tend to get a sense of all the parts of the body merging together. And it's by creating that space in the touch that it, we allow the receiver's energy field to balance itself and to reorganize itself by having that space. From a technique point of view, we explored the alternating hands technique. And the way Pauline developed that was instead of having one hand stationary to assess a change in a particular area and then work in a Masnaga style to find the Kyo points that change the energy under the mother hand, what she discovered was by expanding the peripheral vision, tuning into the energy field, tuning into the body, we can use both hands so we can use a faster rhythm and we can assess the changes by accessing the energetic field rather than literally holding a hand over one particular area. And that moves us towards experiencing the whole energy body as a kind of light field um, rather than as more of a condensed matter. And then we looked at two, if you remember, Gabriella took us through two separate techniques, mindset, which is actually using the mind itself, our minds to focus in and create uh, like a reality, a new reality that we, use, that we imprint into the touch. Um, and that again comes through the touch. You can see this, see Pauline focusing in there, talk about contractive vision and focus using a mindset. There we are, it's like a, like a laser beam going in there. <laughs> um, and then we also discuss modeling, which is a more expanded technique. And that's more like a resonance technique where if you want, if you'd like to encourage space for change in the receiver, you can create that space in your own field, connect them to connect them together through a process of resonance and connection. Um, and then you can communicate by that method. In other words, instead of directing it in and creating a change, we can create the change in ourselves and broadcast that out into the energetic field. So there's two very useful techniques that we can use. And then we were into week three. <laughs> Um, we looked at the meridians, we looked at how the meridians um, vibrate on all levels, so they connect out into the energetic field, and they're a bridge between the body and the bodies with a big B, that's the, um, the bodies that we went on to explore, and this is how Pauline described it, there's the material body, which is the physical body, um, it has the ch chakras and the meridians in it, but it's more of a three-dimensional space, um, the personal body was like an extension of it into the light body. Again, the chakras and meridians are there, but they're extending more out into the field. And they tend to be connected to three-dimensional space, but you're starting to get a bit further away from the fixed three dimensions of the body. Um, and then we go into the ether body, and this is the where we're moving away from three-dimensional information. That's where we pick up information about past stuff, things like that, or emotional, spiritual thing, uh, information um, in the ether body. It's also it contains the emotional body where thoughts and beliefs are held. Um, and that then takes us to the final stage, which I know was the one which is very popular in the polls. It was the one that everyone seemed to tune into more than any of the other ones. And that's the astral body. And that's when we get outside of our own ether body and we extend out into the universe. And then we're well away from three dimensional space. And so we need some kind of model that we can use to kind of visualize it. And that's when we have this idea of the grid. And that's anchored to the two star chakras, the soul star and the earth star chakra. Extends out into the universe. It's the way we connect with the divine source. Okay, and then we're on to week four. <laughs> and we looked at, this is uh, Nicola contributed this lovely diagram we had, uh, we used this as a way of visualizing the connection of the meridians going into the chakras. Remember that all the chakras are connected to all the meridians. 
And here's this amazing diagram that Nicola found in a um, old maths book, Victorian maths book, um, which describes the spiral of the chakras. And then we went on to the soul star and the earth star chakra. So we have the spark of life, the heaven's energy coming from in the outer edge of the ether in the bridge to the astral body. And the earth star is at the lower part. So you've got the two stars. You remember the demo that Nicola did with the candles. And here's a lovely drawing that shows where the earth star and the soul star are connected to the energetic field. And you can see that they're all connected to the central channel. More about the central channel later on in this webinar. And this is, again, Nicola's diagram of the heart, the importance of the heart, how it develops really early at only three weeks. And there's some art, original artwork of the energy of the heart with the picture of the meridians and the chakras connecting in the background. Talked about the three three dantians connecting them to the three treasures, and we did a whole thing on numbers, like how many chakras there are and things like that. And here they are, the chakras, the seven basic chakras, and then we've got the soul star and earth star, and of course there are many others um, depending on which system that you want to go into. And then Gabriella took us on a journey through the rites of the chakras, which I personally found very powerful. That was a really powerful um, experience. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you must have had a similar experience of just re finding out where, which rites you need to work on. I know I definitely found out. <laughs> so each of the chakra gives you a right, either the right to be and to have, the right to feel, the right to act and react, the right to love and be loved, the right to speak and be heard, the right to see and be seen, and the right to know and to be known. And that gives a really positive model for the chakra system. Um, and that's how we left it. We how we left it last week. How would you integrate all this work into your um, treatments? And that was the end of last week. And if I switch back to the slides for, of this week, there should be a poll. So let's have a look. Let's just have a look. Yeah, that's the question. OK, we're going to do a demo in a minute and we'll show you how we do, how we integrate it. But we thought we'd run a couple of polls. First one we want, would like to know is how many of these techniques that we've explored over the last four weeks, how many of them do you regularly use in your work? So either it's just the meridians or meridians of the etheric field, the etheric field and chakras, the nine chakras, or the fifth option is all of that and the astral body. So. I've done a poll for that. I just thought it'd be really interesting to see where you're at with that. So I'm going to share that now. So if you'd like to vote in that poll, just pick the number that you think matches the, about the level where you normally work and we'll get an idea of where you are with it. Okay, if you'd like, anyone else like to vote? Very interesting. OK, the median one, the most popular one is the meridians in the etheric field. So hopefully those of you who work on the meridians and etheric field level might want to explore the chakra system. And then we've got quite a lot of you. Um, we've got like 20, over 20 percent that are you going right up onto the astral plane, maybe because of last week. <laughs> so that's very interesting. Thank you very much for that. And the second poll. Uh, maybe we'll wait until the end. We'll run the second poll at the end, which is which one would you most like to explore? Because that will be after. So uh, remind me to come back to that and we'll run a poll at the end and sign, find out if there's any particular you'd like to explore more. Right. OK, so that's it. Whew, that was a review. <laughs> so, Nicola, would you like to um, would you like to take over for a bit and just review the central channels for us? Um, I'll just turn my mic off, I think, for a second. Hi. Um, I just wanted to reinforce the central channels because I know that probably, maybe we should have had a poll for this as well, probably all of you know something about the central channels from other systems as well. So we've got... Chinese medicine, I've got the four central channels there. You've got yoga. I'm not very good at pronouncing the nadi. Some of you will be able to say it much better. The three nadi that come together. 
And of course, cranial sacral flow, the whole spinal column itself is a central channel. Not only is it a flow of fluid, the cranial fluid from the brain to the sacrum, but also the electricity in the spinal column. All of them are making those chakras. So let me just move on to the next one. So the thing I really wanted to reinforce was the central channels give us that link to the light. So in, in Chinese medicine, we've got the central channels connecting to heaven's energy and earth's energy. Do my rem my, and they bring it into the chong mai. But the important thing is we can do that too with our treatment. We can access that, whatever you think of the etheric fields, the astral body, however you name those things, we can bring that light back into our client's body. And that's the thing that Pauline really, really wanted to share was, because it's quite easy to go, oh, feel a ball of chi, mm, lovely. But the thing, the trick is to go, I, and I can receive that. If we're doing it for ourselves, she, uh, whatever our practice is, or we can go, they can receive that, which is what we're going to do, I hope. <gasps> Next slide. So Chinese medicine, hopefully you all know this and you all know where to look if you don't. So we talk about the cosmic orbit. The Dumai brings the energy down from heaven into the back. Also up the back, all of these channels work in both directions, from the light to the body, up and down. The spiral goes in both directions, both ways which is what makes the chakra so amazing. So they set up the cosmic orbit. The Chong Mai, sometimes called the blood meridian, brings the energy into the body. The Bao Mai, often called the blood meridian, brings the energy right into the body. Sometimes called the heart uterus meridian. I used to call it that a lot, but of course men have it too. The quality of the Bao Mai is to take that energy from the cosmic orbit into the blood into every cell. Something similar happens in yoga. So the three meridians, and I picked this image, which has been tidied up. I quite like the reflection, but someone's edited it for me. Um, I picked this image because it really shows the snakes crossing. So back in Celtic medicine, we have the two snakes called the caduceus. So here in yoga, we've got the three meridians, the central channel, and the two kundalini snakes meeting. Every time the snakes cross, you set up that chakra. And sometimes, and possibly the reasons why the chakras are more connected to yoga and less to TCM, is that crossing is a very powerful thing. And I'm really giving you a little bit of homework now. If you could take a few minutes at some point to stand Feel your cosmic orbit, feel the energy of heaven and earth mixing in your body, however you do that. But then also to maybe try this, feel heaven and earth energy mixing in your body and put in a few of the chakras, tan chien, energy centers. Try the heart, it's the easiest one to get in touch with. Heaven's energy comes into the heart, earth's energy comes into the heart, they mix. Remember that beautiful drawing from the mass book? So they connect to the body via the chakras. And in the classic sort of yoga tradition, they say it leads to liberation. The light comes into the body. I'm sorry about this picture. It's a little bit medical. But the cranial sacral flow gives us that physically in the body. A flow of energy, a flow of fluid. The whole spine sets up that energy. You can palpate the you can not palpate, that means feel. You can feel the spine off the body. You can feel the flow of the cranial sacral rhythm off the body if you try. That's what I really wanted to reinforce. So the central channels, however you visualize them, however you get in touch with them, form a link out to the light, out to the grid, out to stuff that we don't understand and back into every single cell. That's what I want to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so now it's time to go to the demos and um, I'm just gonna turn this off.
And if Nicola and I turn our cameras off, we'll give Gabriella center stage. Okay. And uh, so this is my yeah. client, my receiver. I have no mask because we are living together since. Say comodo. Okay. I asked him if he was comfortable. So I will start by aligning myself, feeling between heaven and earth, opening all my joints, taking a deep breath. You can hear the thunders. It's really very bad weather. Okay, and then I have a look, try to see how his energy is expressing itself. And what I see is a lot of presence of the energy in the upper part of the body and uh, more silence in the legs, in the lower part of the body. And I would immediately like to connect these two areas. So this is my mindset to use these strengths of the upper part and let it also come to the lower part of the body. Okay, so already I have an information to work with and then I will just hold the receiver between my two hands just to plug in, to get in contact, to have a feeling, just to feel that we are together, we are on the same page. Okay. And then I will call the energy from Earth to come and nourish all of his system, cells, physical body, etheric fields, just get it to him. And then I will anchor this energy in the Earth Star Chakra so that he can continue receiving it. Okay. And then I will call the energy from heaven to enlighten, to come with these precious gifts to his cells, to all his physical body, to its etheric field. And then I anchor this energy to the soul star chakra. And then I merge these two energy into a channel of light and anchor this channel of light in the earth star chakra and in the soul star chakra. And already I see how far from the physical body these two chakras are. This is already another information I get. Sometimes they are very close for him, they're just, I would say, almost a meter off the body. So it gives me an idea of the expansion where he's already present in his uh, etheric field. And then I do a diagnosis. I used to do an etheric diagnosis until I found out that the information I was receiving was not coming from my hand, but from, his, from the field. So I stopped doing the etheric and I just ask, I just ask the etheric field, I just ask his system, what do you want me to work? What, which is your light meridian? And I get kidney. Okay. So now I could either work the kidney meridian or I could install or wake up the chakras. So I will start with the chakras. I like when I do off the body techniques, I always like to have a hand in contact with the person because some people they can very nicely feel even when I'm not touching them, but some people they don't feel anything. So I like to have a contact anyway. And then I found out with, that very often if the meridian spins counterclockwise, it tends to open. If it spins counterclockwise, 
clockwise, then it tends to close. So it's just, again, no judgment. I'm just finding out. And of course, I will remind the person about the rights. I'm not going to speak them aloud, but I will kind of uh, tell the system. So this is open. Mm, this is more clockwise. And then I merge them again. I put them together with this channel of light and with all the other channels, all the other meridians that are here. And again, check. Sometimes I can also check if the Earth Star Chakra and the Soul Star Chakra have the same strength of expression, the same presence. Maybe some, I feel this is a little bit weaker, so I try to wave it up so that, okay, now they are better. And then I go to the working with this light meridian that I work as a light vibration. But before doing so, I just want to scan it, to just work, just lean on this, on the diagnostic area. Okay, and again, I feel more presence here and less in the legs. Okay, and then I scan the etheric field, and it's a very soft wave going out. Okay, so now I can start working with the meridian. First, I get in contact with this leg. And when I work, I work really the meridian as a vibration that resonates in the whole body and in the etheric field. Okay. And when I'm working here, I'm also trying to contact this energy in the upper part of the body so that I can start inviting energy to come down. Then one thing Pauline was doing to wake up the energy of the etheric field was just this, what she would call infusing. So you're just inviting, you know, kind of really waking up the energy of the personal body. And then she would also do something like streaming. She would say, imagine you have the energy of the light meridian coming out from your fingers like ribbons. And with this, you, okay. And if I do like this, and I do like this, you can tell. Here there is a substance, here there is nothing. So, okay, it worked. I don't go the other side because then you just see my back. So I'm just working. And what I notice is that the, the wave I noticed in the beginning is getting a little bit stronger, a little bit uh, more moving, more vibrating. And at this point, I can just 
tell how far he is present. So I can feel him up here. Yes. So it's a little bit, it's the, for sure the personal body is present and is going towards the ether body. I will just, I really want to do is Renmai, and when I do the Renmai, I also connect with the Dumai and with the Chongmai. So I'm here, but I kind of get them all. I think my time is almost over, but the last thing I would like to do, sometimes I open up the Chong Mai through its opening point, which is spleen four, and I just see how it is. And very often I see Nicola like a spiral, just like the two together. In this case, it's, it's just light, light coming down. And I can imagine this light also coming down towards the feet, so to wake up and to create more movement into the legs. Grazie. Okay, thank you. Now it's my turn to adjust the camera. Yeah. Hey, there's his cat. Hello. One of our team in Norwich has kindly come in to be my model. <laughs> Let's just check that this, everything is okay. Let's see that we're the camera is okay. Yeah, I think that will do fine. Hope you can hear me through the mask. I'll talk very clearly. <laughs> okay, so I've got 10 minutes to just show you the kind of things that I do, the way that I integrate the material. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask Kat if there's anything she'd like to have happen in the session. That gives me an idea to focus, what level to focus on. So Kat, you got anything? Yeah, to um, I had to think about it. Yeah, to feel more like centered. Yeah, okay. So things that are a bit scattered to come together to okay. make more space. Okay, all right. That's so, it. I hope okay. you could hear me. <laughs> I just repeat that she wants everything to come in to create more space. Is that right? Yeah. More to come in. Center to be to have more space. Okay. Okay. Right. So let's see what I can pick up and see if there's any way we can help her do that. Um, so what I would do normally is I would align myself, align my own energetic field, and then what I would do then is I'd do similar to Gabriella, but I don't do it with the gestures, I go through scanning. So first of all, I'm going to do it all from contact with the Hara. I'm aligning, and now what I'm going to do first of all is feel the border of um, Kat's etheric field, Okay, and the thing I notice most of all is her earth star chakra is quite a lot stronger than the soul star. So I'm going to just draw that and I'll show you in a minute the drawing. Okay, so once I've got that information, then I'll go into the chakras and I'll scan them and see if there's any particular chakra that's calling it attention, calling my attention. So I'm just going to scan down, so I'll just point to where I'm scanning and I'm just going to kind of work downwards. So here we go, crown chakra, throat chakra, heart chakra, solar plexus chakra, uh, 
Okay, so I've got quite a lot of information. A couple of chakras pop, kind of popped out. So, so now I've got information on the whole field, and I've got information from the chakras. So now I'll select the meridians, and I usually do that either etherically or palpating. So I'll show you what it looks like, something like this. Okay, so I can drop down to the Kyo Jitsu diagnosis, and what I've got is I've got um, Kidney Jitsu, Heart Kyo, Heart and Small Intestine Kyo. Okay, so I've got a heart diagnosis. Now, what I'd like to do now is I, what I want to do is get a feel for which meridians are going to create this feeling of it moving in. Maybe it'd be the, even the Kyo Jitsu combination. So what I do now is I'll keep my awareness here into the whole field, expand my awareness of the meridians, and I'll test to see what's going to happen if I do this. Okay, so now what I've done now is I've done a Kyojitsu reaction, but I felt it in the entire field. I felt the heart chakra get stronger and more organized. And I felt, um, I felt a, a similar feeling of what she described, of this centering in here, okay? So what I do now is I'd work the session and um, pick the subos, adjust the session to try and get that movement, okay? So what I'll probably do is probably scan into this area here, either through the heart diagnostic area, or I'll put my hand here and tune into the central channel with the heart chakra there. And then I would do the whole session focusing on, on that. And I'll just give you a few little ideas of what I might do. Um, Probably if I probably start off with small intestine channel, so I'm working the small intestine channel here. Okay, and as I go into this channel here, into the small intestine channel, I can feel this area here, the energy condensing into the middle. So I'm getting direct feedback from the central channel and from the chakras right down into the actual individual points that I'm working on the small intestine channel. And I can be quite precise about that. For example, there's one right there that I can go into that really strongly pulls the energy in. And that's what I do. I'd work around the whole uh, body. I can maybe do a little bit of work on the kidney channel and just see what happens with that. Okay, so the kidney channel has more of a, just a more of a stabilizing feeling. It's more the fire element that seems to be pulling the energy into the central channel. The only other thing I'd like to mention is what I would also do is I'd really like to see, um, I'll show you the picture of my drew. <laughs> <laughs> so look, here's the earth star chakra. Here's the soul star. And you can see how it's stronger here and there's something happening around here with the heart chakra and the second chakra there. And the hara would be here like this, with the heart diagnostic area and the kidney like that. So it's different layers of information I'm picking up. But one of the things I'd like to do in the session is I'd like this to feel more strong, like that. And if I, as I've got one more minute left, I'll just show you this kind of thing that I would probably do, something like this. Um, I think you're fine. That's fine, yeah. Okay, so I'm just working the heart and the kidney channels here, and I'm monitoring the heart chakra. What I would like to do is I'd just like to stabilise the placement of the soul star chakra so that it's nicely placed here. And I do that by working on Cat's neck and I actually probably select out the meridians depending on the diagnosis. So I'm going into bladder 10 now, a very specific SUBO. I'm scanning down through her back, checking the central channels, checking the heart chakra, but I'm also extending my awareness here to see whether that's influencing the placement of the soul star chakra, because that will give her a feeling of being lifted up 
as well as the energy coming into the middle. And I could probably do the same thing on the other side, maybe work the small intestine meridian as well. And again, as I'm working it, I'm just checking to see where that is placed. Okay, that's my time up. <laughs> do you want to give me just a uh, so, sorry it's so short? Yeah. I, think, I think you need a shiatsu. I do. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to give her a free shiatsu for being on oh, this demo. No. Yeah, definitely. You should come in. <laughs> but did you feel any, yeah. did anything happening? This was so strong. Yeah. It made this. It was like everything was singing. Right. Okay. Like a golden singing in the center it was strong wasn't it on the yeah really channel. strong yeah. yeah and then uh when you worked here it's like my belly could like relax a bit this right. had more space yeah and then when you worked up here all of this started to just open even more and oh, the right. sacrum oh, that's good. dropped it's like the sacrum dropped more all right yeah okay, great oh, and what about these points did you think that but, they were the, the specific points were yeah the small intestine one was like Strong. Like a a plug. It's like you plug me in, and I just went. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. You're That's brilliant. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I uh, just a few. Hi. <laughs> thank you so much, Kat. <laughs> so I just get she's more than two meters away. Yeah. So you can see how what I do is I basically I take information at different levels. Um, and I do it mainly through scanning. I don't do so much gestures like Nicola and um, uh, Gabrielle and Pauline used to do. I do it mainly through an expansion of the internal scanning of the body. And I just regulate the amount of expansion. But then what I'll do is when I'm working the channels, like when I work the small intestine channel um, on a cat then. So this would be the small intestine channel. And there's like a SUBO. And the SUBO directly feeds into this central channel and it pulled the energy in like that into the especially into the heart center there and that's kind of how it works so i hope you enjoyed that i hope that's made some kind of sense <laughs> um i hope it's of some interest and so now it's time for nicola cool 10 minutes <laughs> so i'm here this is my partner spin so finally gets to give him a shiatsu, which is a, always a nice thing. So I've got the soul star and heaven star, lit the same candles, just so that I'm going to try and do something similar to what I've been doing in the other sessions. Putting my hands on the body, that's really like the core of what we're trying to say Pauline wanted, is this etheric work. It might look like I'm waving my hands around this style. What I want to do is bring that beautiful energy of the cosmos into the physical body. So I'm going to have a sense of the alignment. And I, I'm starting most of my treatments in prone these days. I think when the client is breathing out down through the hole of the table, it's much safer. So I tend to do just prone in side position. So I use the spine directly. I get in touch with the spine, get in touch with the back get in touch with the central channels and start to notice what they feel like. I mean, obviously I know what spin feels like very well. We've had only ourselves for nearly a year. Then what I will do is ask for help. So tune into the Earth Star, any energy from the Earth. And this always happens when I tune in to the Earth Star with spin. We're both botanists, we love flowers. What happened was greenness, plants, loads of plants and trees came. Yeah, how can I support this treatment? Connect him to nature. Same thing from the heavens energy. How can I support this treatment? What comes in from heaven? Beautiful energy from the sky, from the stars. And I bring that into the center and I invite them to mix. So one of the things Pauline um, used to say was don't do this, but to do this, because you want earth energy up to the head. 
and heaven's energy down to the feet. So this is my gesture. And it's great that you've seen Gabriella do something different, Cliff do something different. And we're just inviting this cosmic energy that we don't even know how to describe into this physical body and to support the meridians. I'm doing an etheric hara diagnosis on the lower back. I'm just sort of, this is a new thing since lockdown. So I'm just starting to do it. And in a way, I'm really doing what Gabriella does and just say, which meridian shall I work? And I'm getting, oh, getting a bit of wood here. I guess that was the earth star talking to me. So I'm gonna use a little bit of wood energy going to dive down the side of the leg and just invite the meridian to vibrate at whatever level it wants to do so rather than setting up any particular thing so here we go having a bit of wood energy through the system connect to the earth star connect into the physical body just having some trackways for that to work with i know that He's got a bit of a shoulder issue, probably that would be helped by the wood. So just setting that up, I'm going to come back and check in with the chakras. So anything in the central column that really wants to shout out, oh, we've got something around the throat. So for me, it really in involves going in to touch that, come into the neck. Oh, bit of modelling. we <laughs> come back to the review. I, I'm loosening up my own neck, loosening up my own jaw, thinking about the gallbladder meridian in the back of the neck, allowing that to soften, resonate, tune in. And one of the things I learned with this new work is to be the catalyst between the energy and the receiver. It's not me doing anything. It's me listening and then going, oh, okay, maybe if I put my hands there, that's interesting. So let's try that again. The chakras. So this is more connected to the rest of it now. So the central column is feeling more like a wondrous column of light. I need to do a little something here. That's probably part of that shoulder. Let the energy bubble and swirl however it wants to. Inviting the energy to come in. So, Heaven Star has started to come in with some interesting mm, lines and swirls, maybe sacred geometry, maybe a bit too dramatic for that. But I'm going to invite the flower of life, same as I did the other week, connect to the have a little star, imagine all the chakras in between. They become the circles in the flower of life. And then I'm going to do them diagonally. I think I'm living my best life, doing a shiatsu on my partner, being watched. <laughs> Beautiful. So as the flower of life comes in, there's a sense that I'm going to wind that sacred geometry, fifth dimensional energy, whatever you like to call it, into the physical body and just say to the energy, the life force, the part of the, the physical matter of the person that is indescribable, unknown. Do what you want with this. Bring it in. Let, let him have access to the infinite chi of the universe. The infinite energy. You know, the world is big enough. If I connect to the energy of all the plants and all the whole life force of our world, 
And if we go out into the cosmos, woo, we're just a little planet at the edge of a reasonably sized galaxy. And there are so many galaxies in the whole universe. So all that energy available for you into your meridians, into your central channels. Dropping that in. So imagine I've done a bit more working around the gallbladder. bladder. I would definitely do some side position and work on this shoulder a bit. And then as I come to the end of the treatment, it almost looks like the same thing. I bring the energy in. What um, Gabriella just said about sort of dropping the energy into the physical body. And Pauline used to do a great thing of just sort of getting it into the sacrum. It's called the sacrum because it's the sacred bone in your body. It receives that energy. So just really dropping it into the physical being of my partner. Mm. I was a little bit quick because I know we've got a few things to do before we finish up. So I'm going to just come around. I'm going to show you my flower of life that we drew together. Spin did the um, spin did the photo, the illustrator. I did the coloring. That's the sort of thing I was imagining as I did the treatment. So thank you very much. I'm just going to. Shut my camera so he can walk out. Thank <laughs> you so much, Nicola. I hope everyone really enjoyed um, enjoyed that. Um, enjoyed seeing all of us work. Similar kind of thing going on, just a different external um, <laughs> external manifestation, I suppose. Different, slightly different focus. So we've just got um, a few minutes left. If there are any questions, let's just have a quick look and have a look at the questions. Um, Okay, Jackie says, can you say something about how to integrate working with the vibrational levels with this, with the levels of the body? Does anyone want to answer that question? Yes. Yes. On, <laughs> Definitely. Um, the vibrational levels go from very physical. So if we do lung, we've got breathing, and that's in your physical and so your personal, your material body, the meridian body. And it can shine out a little bit into the ether body. As you start to breathe deeply, you might well get in touch with your emotions as well. So you've got your whole um, lung energy in your ether field, and that's all in the present. And then if you take that vibration with the lung meridian even a little bit higher, and you touch towards the PO, our one lifetime, our life energy, that can resonate the whole of the ether body, past and present, and then you can slip into the astral. So all the vibrational levels give you a direct connection to the bodies. And actually, we did do, a, we did, we have done, a, there is a course on new energy work on that, that takes you through loads of techniques as well that allow you to sense the different levels and tune your body, which evolved out of Pauline's work. So if you want to check that out, if you're a member of... Um, New energy work. If you're not, then please join as a free member. Okay, we've just got five minutes left. I'm going to just go through the last slides. Um, and uh, yeah, just want to remind you that we're putting all these resources into an online course, which is free to access. All the video recordings are in there, and certainly by the day after tomorrow and Thursday, everything will be finished. Um, we've actually generated well over 100 slides, and all those slides are online for you to access. And the team here have been putting some fun quizzes together. There's just a few questions after each one just to show that you've um, watched the videos. And then that allows us to give you the CPD credits. If you need the CE CPD credits for your national organization, then that's really, really great. And it looks a bit like this. You go into new energy work and you go into the course, you'll see this um, kind of thing. This is what the quizzes look like. So you can uh, see if you can get through the quizzes. And you can see the slides, like I said, all the slides, they come up really well. So if you want to revisit the slides, it's all there for you. OK, so I just wanted to say thank you to all the presenters. We've had so much fun. Um, um, you were going to give them the final. Oh, final. thank you so much for oh, reminding me. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you, Nicola. I've got it written on a big bit of paper, but of course I forgot all about it. 
Right, so which of these techniques would you most interested in developing in your work? So is it more into the etheric field, the seven chakras, the soul and the earth star? Oh, I put star there, I meant star. That's a typo. Wow, look at this. This gives us an idea for the second course that we're going to put together at some point next year. <laughs> we can take you, that pretty much matches. Look, there's real interest in more in the soul and earth star and the astral body. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And, and one of the things that's been wonderful doing this course is to that doing something through this technology really made the astral body so much clearer for that's everyone. Absolutely true. If you do this whole course <laughs> in this room, then, oh, you go, okay, can you feel the difference? Whereas because the physical bodies were taken away, we got that really clear connection to each other. So thank you so much for everything that everyone else put yeah, in. That's what I was going to say. Thank you also to the donors as well that have helped finance it. You know that everything is now free on New Energy Work. And uh, so we want to really thank all of you, you that generous, generously donated, either as a member or as a, um, as a participant. And yeah, thank you for tuning in. It's been absolutely great. Okay, so just to finish up, we've got the next webinar next Tuesday is the last webinar of the year. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to review. We've had the most, well, unbelievable year. Um, we're going to look back over the webinar series we've done, the ISCO that we put on. Um, we're going to look at, we're going to present with some new memberships. We're going to keep everything free on new energy work going forward. And we're going to reorganize the membership. So basically it's like a donation membership, um, patronage membership. And also that cat who was just lying down here has been actually secretly collecting loads of outtakes, which I haven't seen of when we were creating the videos and she's putting them together. It's going to be very, very embarrassing for everyone, I'm sure, but she's editing it together. So you will see a collection of outtakes of us in compromising positions we, <laughs> that we don't know about yet. So you should really you shouldn't <laughs> miss that. And also we're obviously going to um, just share some of our ideas for next next year. Um, we've got a whole range of really exciting things coming up for next year. And you can you can sign up for it straight away on New Energy Work. It's right on the home page, New Energy Work now. Um, or you can wait until we send out an email tomorrow and we'll send you a link to um, to the whole thing. In fact, I've actually I've prepared the link um, right away. It's, I can share it now just if you want to just sign up. Um, you can just go to it now and just register for that. And I'll just show you what it looks like. Yeah, that's the that's the um, page, the road going forward. I think we're all looking forward to moving, always looking forward to moving into 2021. Okay, so that's the end of the webinar. Thank you so much, Gabriella. Thank you so much, Nicola. I'd like to get, I'm going to actually turn my camera off and get Dinah's camera on just for the last minute because I think you really, she's been working really hard uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, so so thank you. Please, may I also thank you for organizing this Incredible Thank you very much. I've really, really enjoyed it. I've really, it's been so much fun. We've really had so much fun. Yeah, great. Yeah, and thank really you, fun. Dinah, for all your work. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Very, very good. Yes, Dinah. All the yes, thank you, thank it's been a you. joy, an absolute joy. I love to celebrate Pauline with you. It's been a treasure, oh. absolute treasure. And I've been having such fun with all my clients since we started this series, being um, having that quality brought back so vividly into my work and Pauline's presence there, it's been a joy. So thank you, Cliff and Gabriella and Nicola. Fabulous. I'll yeah. go away now. And, and Diana, really, thank you so much for managing the chat. You just do such an amazing okay. job. Great time to, to go. It's a hard job. Yeah. So until the next webinar, next Tuesday, the last one of the year, we'll see you then. Thank you so much for supporting it. We've had an amazing response and it's just time to say goodbye. And thank okay. you to Pauline. And thank you for being such an inspiration. <laughs>